Hey guys, today I'm in Dream Car Builder. Now, originally I was going to do a Minecraft video today, but I decided to go with this instead because my subscriber special, it's a little bit easier for me to work this in. But, yeah, here I am. Today what I'm going to do is make a propeller plane. Now, I've made a couple planes, but I've never made a plane that's driven by a propeller, which is a little bit more tricky than it might seem, because this game doesn't necessarily just give you a propeller to use. So the first thing I wanted to work on is making a propeller. Now, this is, you know, seems natural for making a propeller plane, but really it's crucial here because I need to make sure I can get a way to get power to a plane. And in fact, I'm actually going to make a car first, the propeller, and then turn that into a full plane. Here, well, my propeller design didn't quite work out so well. Mostly because I forgot triangles, which I should have learned from Polybridge. So after adding in some supports to the part that the propeller sits on and to the propeller itself, it still flops around, but it's at least holding itself up a bit better. So it gave me a framework to work off of. Here I added a bit more support to the propeller, so now there's a piece holding it back, and I added a cage underneath the car, so that eventually I can add a um, wheel system. And you see the propeller is rotating, and it's not completely falling apart. So I'm ready to add some power. I'm doing that with jets. So they're going to spin up the propeller, and we'll hopefully make them move forward. Keep in mind though, right now, nothing should happen, since I hadn't added any um, lift or drag to the propeller blades. So you see here, I'm just getting some movement because of the vibration and the imbalance in the propeller. I'm testing to see if it's strong enough, and, well, it's not. Do you see how the jets are facing the same direction? The propeller would have had to break since they were originally facing the other direction. So after strengthening it a little bit and adding some lift to the propeller, you see here, it's really difficult to tell if I'm actually getting lift. It seemed like for a moment there I might have been, but it could have just been vibration that moved it up. So I decided now it was time to add wheels. The wheels should be able to give me a better guide of whether the propeller is actually pushing or pulling the cart along. So the important thing here is also to make sure I'm adding suspension with the springs. That, that helps the cart um, stay flat on the ground, otherwise it would just continually bounce. Well, I didn't set the compression high enough here, but eventually I did get that working. So now I'm trying it out. But as I go forwards, the car goes backwards, and as I go backwards, the cart just stops. Well, the reason for this is because the propeller was doing absolutely nothing, and when I went backwards, the brake was engaging. So, you know. But raising, raising this joint up actually solved my problem, because it caused the blades to rotate um, not parallel with the rotational axis. Which was a good thing, because you see here, as they rotate, they're sort of wobbling in the air, and that allows them to push air. But it still wasn't done yet, though, because they were actually going in opposite directions, so the air was pushing in opposite directions, which meant they were just cancelling each other out, and I was getting no net thrust. So in order to fix this, I just needed to move- I needed to flip one of the blades. You see I'm doing that here. And, well, that looked a little ugly, so I just needed to fix it up a little bit more, as you see here. And I decided to test this one out, but there was a small issue, because, well, it did work, it was moving it forward, but I couldn't tell if it was because the um, jets were pointed slightly backwards, which created a little bit of thrust, so I needed to do a bit more testing. So the next thing I tried was just going in a straight line. The hope was that I could get a feel for it and get a speed test, and here, I'm moving like 9 or 10 miles an hour max speed, but again, I couldn't tell what was making this happen. Was it the propeller blades? Was it the jets? I don't know. And for a propeller-powered plane, I definitely wanted it to be the propeller making all the speed, not the jets. So in order to test this out, I decided to increase the size and pitch of the propeller blades. This should allow it to move more air and therefore move faster. And you see I have that in here now. So as I hit the throttle, I'm getting anywhere around, well, 10 or 11 miles an hour, which meant there was most likely a contribution being made by the um, propeller, but again, I didn't know how much there was. So what I did was add in these jets so that they were perpendicular to the direction I was trying to move. This would mean they have zero bearing on how fast they move, uh, how fast the car is moving um, forward or backwards. This would tell me how fast the propeller is actually able to push the car. So now I'm giving it a shot, and well, originally I was pretty disheartened because the car wasn't moving forwards, but it was because I installed the jets backwards, so it was just going to move backwards. And I'm getting like 5 miles an hour, which wasn't awesome, so I decided to go for bigger jets and see maybe if I spun it faster if it would perform better. And things went wrong. If anyone has a good comment to describe what's happening here, please leave it down below. Now I'm going for a bigger propeller. The hope is that it can move more air, and therefore I can move faster. So I'm trying that out here on this car, and I still didn't fix the direction. But wow, am I moving fast here. You see, I'm getting almost 40 miles an hour of pure propeller power. This was incredible. 
It was definitely going to be enough to get a plane off the ground. So here I fixed the jets and decided to test this. We'll test how stable it was. And, well, I got my answer. It wasn't awesome. So now I'm just driving it forward and, well, it likes to fall forward because I didn't add enough, well, I didn't add a long enough front. So after extending the front wheels out and adding a support to the front of the propeller because I realized it was kind of shaking around a lot, I decided to give it a quick test. And it's working pretty well. It can move forward really well. But the next thing to add would definitely be steering so that I can actually move, you know, left or right in a useful way. So to do that, you need to add rods. One will expand and one is going to contract when I tell it to steer, and it's going to rotate the front axle in one direction or the other. So now I'm just adding all that in, and, well, I might have set it up a bit wrong. So, I didn't set the limits properly. I meant I meant to set a 10% expansion, not a 90% expansion. So after I fixed that here, I decided to give it a quick test on turning. But you'll see a problem arise that haunted me for a long time. The car really wanted to spin out. So that didn't work too well, but my solution was just to add bigger wheels. This would give me more traction with the ground and it would prevent it from spinning out so much. It definitely still wanted to spin out. Like it was kind of a fight, but it was at least working. You see here, I'm following the roads, but it was still just a pain to drive. And uh, you see I'm pulsating the propeller quite a bit, the flames coming out of the back. And that's because if I just left it on full power, it would just completely destroy itself because it spins too fast. So there's definitely improvements to be made, but I, w I didn't want to make a car, so I got it pretty much as done as I wanted it to. And now it was time to actually make the full um, plane. So I'm keeping the propeller assembly because that was the important part we just developed. And you have to keep the seat because that's where the guy sits. So here I'm creating the nose of the plane. And here I'm just doing one propeller. I may come back sometime and make a massive, like, two or three propeller plane. I guess it would be two or four. Let me know if you want to see that. So now I'm just finishing up the front of the plane, and you see that's, like, the general idea of how it's going to connect. So now with the nose all done, I decided to go for a cockpit. This is actually the easiest thing to add. I just need to be able to cover the guy in the seat. And you see I got that here. I ended up making a few changes later for just aesthetic reasons. But um, next up was the fuselage. I didn't really have an idea for how big I should make it, I just ended up making it a certain size, and after I did the tail end, it felt about right. And now these are the supports where the wings are actually going to sit on, and next I'm actually adding the wings. See I was playing with this for a little bit, I didn't know what size to make this either. But after I had everything set in place, you'll see I, I thought it looked pretty good, it, it seemed about right. Maybe a bit on the smaller side, but once I added in the elevons, it's probably going to be a bit better. Here I'm adding in the panels, these are actually what um, are going to lift up the plane. They're if I didn't have them, otherwise the wings would just be, like, they wouldn't have any drag, so it wouldn't be able to lift up the plane. See on the bottom, I actually have to drag the lift coefficient up, or else it just acts like there's literally nothing there. Here are the elevons I was talking about, and once I had these in, the sizing was about right. The idea here, well, I'm going to add in the rods, is that once they pitch up, the entire plane will pitch up. When they pitch down, the entire plane will pitch down. I'll be controlling that, and that'll help me control the entire plane. So now I was all ready to test it. But then I realized I forgot something. It's a little hard to get off the ground without some landing, or I guess takeoff gear. So with minor destruction to the plane, I did get it off the ground. And it was technically flying, like it was off the ground for a certain amounts of time. So first thing I did was add some wheels so that it wouldn't have to destroy itself to get off the ground. And I get a little bounce out of it. It's not like, I wouldn't really call that flight, but it was a bounce. So now I'm trying a sharper pitch in the propeller blades. And this get, did get me further off the ground, but it really wanted to turn. So now I think I did a shorter propeller, but kept the same pitch. This is a longer propeller with the same pitch. And this actually gets me a nice bounce off the ground. So after adding a bigger propeller, which was kind of getting stupid big at this point, it actually was flying. Like, it finally had enough power, it could just, like, pull itself up no matter what was behind it. So I had zero control over this thing, and it looks like a complete mess, and it's oscillating everywhere. But it's flying, so it was at least a start I could make a full plane off of. But you see, one of the big issues I had is that it kept rotating right. So I needed a solution to this. So to do this, I tried adding a seal panel in that would have a bunch of drag, and it would hopefully cancel out the drag that the propeller was causing. Well, here I added it on the same side, so it actually exacerbated the drag considerably. So now I'm just moving that, um, I don't even know what I'm going to call it. I guess a drag plate to the other side. So I set it to like 50%, so that it's not moving it quite as much. You see here, well... I can't even see it in action because the plane just wants to nosedive now. I realized it was kind of a dumb idea to add that plate because it's constantly wanting to pitch down the plane, which is just annoying. 
So, this actually has nothing to do with fixing that problem. I'm just shrinking down the aileron. I mean, the elevon. The reason I'm doing this is to make room for the aileron. The elevon was what was pitching up and down the plane, and the aileron is what's going to roll the plane, or rotate the plane. Now, these are two of the three controls of the plane. There's also another one with the yaw. It's a rudder control, which shifts the plane left and right, but you don't need it to fly, and it overcomplicates things, so there's really no reason. This is incredibly important. I'm shrinking the pitch of the propeller, and what this is going to do is... Well, actually, I thought I was going to perform worse, but apparently it's much more efficient. You see, it's moving forward, like, a lot. And, well, it's still nose diving, so I need to fix that issue, but it's, like, pretty good now. So now I'm deciding to give a smaller propeller a shot. The hope is that it, well, it weighs less, so it shouldn't weigh down the nose as much. And it's actually working pretty well. I can move the plane up and down, but I still have no left or right control, because I didn't add in the ailerons. So I figured it's probably about time by now I add those in. So you see, they're just like the elevons, except they're on the outside of the wing, and they're a bit smaller. The reason that they're on the outside of the wing is that you get more um, mechanical advantage being further out from the center. So here I'm going to try them out. I'm going to try to do a left rotate, you can see there, and I'm going to go the other way. And that was weak, but it was at least kind of enough. But the plane was still like moving right, which I didn't like. So now I'm adding in some yaw control, which I know I literally just said wasn't important. And it's, it apparently wasn't in the end, but I thought maybe it was kind of the issue now. So I added in a rod to pull in the um, rudder as I spun up the plane. I thought maybe that fixed the problem, and it absolutely didn't. It just was a mess. And after a considerable amount of tuning, this was the best flight I ever got. And it's an awful flight. The plane is constantly rotating clockwise, which just makes it impossible to fly. And no matter what I do, I just cannot get control of it at all. So I had no clue what was going wrong. My solution eventually was just to make the rudder bigger. I had no reasoning as to why this would fix the problem at that time. I just figured maybe it would help it. And you see as I take off, well, I hit the rock. But it goes straight. In fact, it's the rod that's making it rotate at all. Because it's moving the rudder in, which is making the whole thing get messed up. But I actually have a decent amount of control. Like, it's flying straight, and it's level, which is kind of as much as it's ever done before. So this is incredible, and the next thing I wanted to do is just get rid of that rod, because clearly it wasn't, it was actually just messing up the plane. So it just needed a straight rudder. So now, so I'd give this a shot, see how it would do. And it's flying in a straight line, which was awesome, but it did like to nosedive, which meant two things. It was either too heavy, or didn't have enough thrust. I guess it could be either of those things. So to fix that, you either need to increase thrust or, and decrease weight. So that's what I did. I shrunk down the rudder and made a bunch of the framing pieces from 10 units of mass to 0 0.1, which also makes them weaker, but I wasn't really using their strength anyways. And I made the propeller a bit bigger, so it had a bit more mass, or a bit more surface area. And you see, it looks like it's doing about the same thing. And I guess it kind of is, but here it's able to at least increase in altitude, which means it's flying. And that's really all it needed to do. As long as it's not constantly nosediving, it's, I, in my books, it's a proper plane. Here I prettied it up a bit, I just added a few panels. It looks like I did a lot, but all I did was just add some panels on the outside and colored them. And you see this is the kind of final look at the plane. Definitely just the pretty part about it. So now it was time for the true test. I went onto the airport map, which, well, has two airports. And I took off from one of them and I was setting off for the other. I figured if I could land at the other one without crash landing, I would probably call that a success. So I set off for the mountains and, well, I'll meet you on the other side. Here it was finally time for the landing. Now, this was kind of an issue because it didn't really occur to me that the plane was incredibly difficult to fly at low speeds because it just constantly wanted to spin out one direction or the other. So I ended up getting a really rough landing, but I did land on the runway. So I called that a success and I thought it's a done plane, it works, it flies well. And just to prove that the plane is actually being flown by the drag produced by the propellers, 
I removed their drag abilities completely so that only the jets, well, so that the jets were the only things that were pushing air. And you see, it just doesn't move because the propellers aren't moving, the propeller isn't moving air backwards at all. So that there's no thrust being produced. So it is truly the propeller that is making the plane fly forward. All right, thanks guys for watching. This was definitely a difficult video to make. It took a lot more time to edit than usual. The voiceover took a lot more time, well, it's mostly just because it's longer. But it was a difficult thing to record too. Everything was difficult, I guess. <laughs> So, if you like the video, please like the video, consider subscribing for more of this amazing content, and yeah, until next time.